You've probably seen the guides. Enable MSI mode with MSI Utility V3 for lower input lag. Cool, that's the beginner level. But what if I told you there's another layer? By default, Windows lets multiple devices fight for CPU interrupts, your GPU, your network card, even your USB controller. That fight creates micro latency spikes. Every time a device waits its turn, your FPS and input delay suffer. Today, we're going deeper into MSI tuning, not just flipping MSI mode on, but fine-tuning interrupt priorities, registry flags, and per-device latency to unlock buttery smooth responsiveness. This is the level pro tweakers and eSports engineers use, and by the end of this video, you'll know it too. Step 1. Verify MSI mode properly. Message signaled interrupts, or MSI mode, are one of the most powerful low-level latency optimizations in Windows. Instead of devices competing for shared interrupt lines, legacy IRQs, MSI allows them to send dedicated interrupt requests directly to the CPU. This reduces contention, improves responsiveness, and smooths frame times. But here's the catch. Misconfiguring MSI can cause system instability, driver crashes, or even no boot. So we're not just enabling everything, we're auditing carefully. Part 1. Get the tool. Download MSI Utility V3, commonly available on GitHub or Guru3D forums. Extract it and run as administrator. Part 2. Audit key devices. Inside the utility, you'll see a table of all devices with interrupt settings. Focus on the following hardware. GPU, AMD or NVIDIA, network card, Ethernet or Wi-Fi, NVMe or storage controller, USB XHCI controller. If your USB is enabled, make sure that your mouse and keyboard are routed here. For each of these, Ensure MSI mode is checked. For GPU and NIC, set interrupt priority to high. For storage and USB, normal priority is usually safe unless you notice latency issues. Part 3. What not to touch. Never enable MSI mode for ACPI devices, high definition audio bus or HD audio controller, system timers or chipset bridges. Enabling MSI on these can cause boot loops, audio dropouts, or device malfunctions. Part 4. Backup and Safety Before applying changes, take a screenshot of your current IRQ table in MSI Utility. Apply changes, reboot your system. If something breaks, no display, missing device, boot into safe mode, reopen MSI Utility, and revert the settings. After this step, your system will be running with dedicated interrupt pathways for your GPU, network, and storage. That means faster input registration, lower driver latency, and fewer micro stutters under heavy load. Step 2. Unlock hidden MSI priorities via registry. MSI Utility version 3 gives you a surface-level way to enable message signaled interrupts, or MSI, and adjust priority, but it doesn't expose the low-level latency flags that Windows hides in the registry. These hidden values let you fine-tune how each device interrupts the CPU, shaving off microseconds that add up to noticeable input lag. Part 1. Get the device path. Open Device Manager. Locate the device you want to optimize, GPU, NIC or NVMe controller. Right-click, Properties, Details tab. From the Property drop-down, select Device Instance Path. Copy the long string you see. Part 2. Registry Edits. Open Regedit, Win plus R, type RegEdit. Navigate to In the right panel, check for or create the following D word values. MSI supported, priority. The priority should be three, where three equals high, two equals normal, 
and 1 equals low. For GPU and NIC, set to 3. For NVMe or USB controllers, you can keep 2 unless you're chasing every last millisecond. Message number limit, 1. This restricts the device to a single interrupt message. It reduces overhead and jitter. Some high-end NICs and NVMe drives prefer multiple messages for throughput. If you get instability, like dropped packets or stuttery disk access, increase this back to two or higher. Devices to apply. GPU. Always enable MSI plus high priority, critical for input responsiveness. NIC or Ethernet Wi-Fi. High priority if you game online. Reduces network DPC spikes. NVMe controller. Improves I.O. latency, useful for asset streaming in open-world games. USB XHCI controller, mouse and keyboard. Optional, but can cut mouse input lag if your peripherals are on that controller. Safety notes. Don't apply this blindly to every device. Leave ACPI, audio bus, and chipset bridges alone. Forcing MSI there can cause BSODs or device failure. Always export the registry key before editing so you can revert if needed. Step 3. Balance IRQ Affinity. Stop devices fighting CPU cores. Even after enabling MSI mode and boosting device priority, Windows can still assign multiple devices to the same CPU core for interrupt handling. This is called an IRQ interrupt request conflict, and it creates hidden bottlenecks your GPU, NIC, and USB controller may all try to talk to the CPU through the same lane at once. Result? Input lag, delayed packets, and micro stutters, even if your FPS looks fine. The fix is to manually balance IRQ affinity so each critical device has its own core. Part 1. Get the tool. Microsoft actually provides an official utility for this. Download Interrupt Affinity Policy Tool from Tech Power Up. Extract it somewhere safe, like C Drive Tools slash IRQ. Run it as administrator. Part 2. Assign Affinity per device. Inside IRQ Tool, you'll see a list of devices and their interrupt policies. Here's the optimal assignment strategy for gaming PCs. GPU, NVIDIA or AMD, assigned to a dedicated physical core, ideally not core zero. Example, on a six core CPU, give the GPU core two. NIC, Ethernet or Wi-Fi, put this on a different physical core from the GPU. Example, core three. USB controller, mouse and keyboard, assigned to Core 0. Core 0 is usually the fastest to wake and ideal for ultra-low latency mouse and keyboard interrupts. NVMe controller, optional, can share with NIC if needed or place it on Core 4. The goal? Spread out the load so GPU, NIC and peripherals aren't all competing on the same thread. Part 3. Apply and test. After assigning, click Apply Policy. Restart your PC to lock in changes. Test responsiveness in a game or benchmark. Use Latency Mon to confirm lower DPC and ISR execution times. Pro Tips If you're running a CPU with hyperthreading or SMT, always use physical cores, not logical threads, for interrupt assignments. If something feels unstable, like dropped packets or stuttery USB, reassign that device to another core. Keep a screenshot of your IRQ policies so you can revert quickly. Step 4. Clean up legacy interrupt moderation and offloads. Some NICs and USB controllers still use interrupt moderation, which batches interrupts to save CPU. That's death for latency-sensitive gaming. For NIC, Ethernet or Wi-Fi, Device Manager to Network Adapters to Properties to Advanced Tab. Disable Interrupt Moderation, Receive Side Coalescing, and Offloads like Large Send Offload, Checksum Offload. For USB controllers, 
device manager, to universal serial bus controllers, to properties, to advanced or power tab. Disable selective suspend and idle power management. Now interrupts are delivered instantly instead of being buffered. Step 5. Force MSI performance mode via CMD and BCD tweaks. Final step. Make sure Windows doesn't fall back to legacy line-based interrupts at boot. Open CMD as admin and run these commands. These ensure Windows clocks and interrupts stay in performance sync mode. Then in registry, navigate to, and that's the real next level of MSI tuning. Not just clicking a checkbox in MSI utility, but controlling per device latency, assigning IRQs to different CPU cores, and making Windows prioritize your GPU and NIC above everything else. For competitive players, this means snappier inputs, reduced stutter, and lower ping jitter. For everyday gamers, it's free FPS stability. Test this out, benchmark before and after, and let me know how much smoother your system feels. If you found this deep dive helpful, smash like, sub, and share it with a fellow FPS junkie. I'll keep digging into these hidden tweaks that nobody else covers. Until then, happy fragging.